104.5, the team, your home for New York Yankees baseball. Joining us right now uh, from NJ.com, uh, Randy Miller. Randy, well, thank you for making time for us. We appreciate it. Yankees, Sox tonight. What are the odds we see round two of the brawl? <laughs> I think the odds are very low. I don't think uh, anything is going to happen. Neither player wanted to sit out games. Joe Kelly, uh, Tyler Austin. I think uh, if there's a round two, it's going to be Yankee fans heckling at Joe Kelly in the Red Sox bullpen. And I see where Joe Kelly told the Boston reporters yesterday that he's worried uh, things will be thrown at him. He certainly is public enemy number one. And and uh, Tyler Austin has become kind of a cult hero for uh, charging the mound there. So I think it adds a little, adds a little extra fireworks to a, a very, very intriguing uh, May baseball series. It's going to be very good, very excited for it. And the New York Yankees have been so hot, a great stretch of victories. Why have they gotten so good so quickly? Well, um, the short answer is they're a very good team, but <laughs> I think the key is is that they've been winning a lot of different ways. They've gotten really good starting pitching in this stretch, which uh, has been huge because they they haven't done a lot of hitting. They're, if you look at their hitting stats, there's a lot of guys that aren't having great seasons so far, but yet they're hitting with runners in scoring position, and they've been coming back a lot late in games. Uh, they won two games in the last week where there were just incredibly pitch games against them. Uh, Sunday in, uh, against Cleveland and earlier uh, in the week, uh, Houston with Justin Verlander, and they, they win both those games. And I think at some point they're going to uh, get hot offensively as the weather it's warm as it is now, and uh, they've also gotten a lot from, from the rookies. Glaber Torres was a, a shot of energy in the arm for them, and, boy, he's been so good offensively, defensively. And the Hars helped them, and uh, they don't even have a full team yet. And, geez, they won 15 out of 16 games. It's, uh, it's amazing what they've done. And, you know, frankly, they really needed it because before this stretch, when they started 9-9, nine and nine, they were seven and a half games out. And you just wondered, I'm wondering myself, just going to be another 1984 Tigers or the Cubs a couple years ago, where the Red Sox, where they got off to that 17 and two start, where they run away and hide. And I think the Yankees uh, had a sense of urgency, even though they kept saying they weren't worried. Uh, when you're nine and nine with a new manager, uh, it looks a lot worse when the Red Sox start out 17 and two. And I think they felt like they had to get it in gear, and uh, they certainly gotten tremendous starting pitching from from top to bottom in this stretch, and, and even Sonny Gray in the last couple outings has looked better. Randy Miller from NJ.com with us right now, 104.5 The Team. Um, Randy, you, you keep mentioning that the starting pitching has been very good. If there is a blemish on this team, it's that you can't count on some of those guys long term. There, there, is there going to be a move made to bring in another arm, or are we looking down to the farm system? Uh, I think it could be either of the above. As of right now, they're pitching well. I still don't think that this team – is built to win a World Series with the staff as is, even though it looked like they were in the uh, last couple series, uh, being two very good teams, six out of seven, Houston, Cleveland. Um, I think that uh, at the trade deadline, when they can afford a starting pitcher, they may go out and get one and steal some of their very deep farm system. And then also, I think we can we have to keep an eye on uh, Dusha Sheffield, who's our number one pitching prospect who moved up to triple-A last week. He dominated last year in double-A as a 20-year-old, then went to the fall league, a very good league, was very good there, had a good start. They started him over in, uh, in Trenton this year in double-A, and he, he's just now up in triple-A. And to me, he's the one option in Scranton that, that could come up and be an impact guy, a lot more so than Chance Adams, who's another pretty highly touted guy that I'm not quite as high on, and scouts I talk to aren't quite as high on. Um, but I, I, I think my gut is, is that they need to go out and get someone to have a shot to win it all this year. That, that's my gut, unless Tanaka is going to be to pitch like a true ace. They have one now in Severino. I think Severino has elevated, elevated his game to not just staff ace, but to one of the best in baseball, even better than last year when he was uh, third in the league in, in EAL Cy Young. He's, he's improved upon that, and uh, – uh, but I, you, you, you can't win with one. You, when you look at Houston staff and Cleveland staff, those are probably the two best starting rotations of baseball. And I know the Yankees can hit with anyone, but 
uh, in October baseball, you need to have pitching. I think that's what cost them last year. And uh, I, I don't know if there's going to be a starting pitcher out there. Um, it's too early to tell at this point. A starting pitcher who can be a major impact player, what the cost would be. But certainly the Yankees have the people that uh, that uh, to go out and get one. Uh, certainly Chance Adams, Clint Frazier would be, would be trade bait and, and others. I think Tyler Wade would be trade bait. And certainly uh, when you have as many pitchers as they have all through their system, they could they could find a package that works to make a a team that's out of the running uh, uh, happy. But it, it comes down to what are you getting? Are you getting another middle of the rotation guy? Or are you getting a true ace like last year when Justin Verlander went to Houston was a difference maker? I think that was a a huge mistake on the Yankees part that they didn't get him. Just like it, I think it was a mistake this winter when they didn't get Garrett Cole. And now Houston has both of them added to a rotation with Keiko and McCullers and. Um, Charlie Morton, which gives them, to me, the deepest rotation in baseball. Randy Miller, NJ Advanced Media for NJ.com. So, Randy, if you want to start an argument here in the, in the Capital Region, you tell people that they should trade Clint Frazier. So, <laughs> who is, is – is, is there any untouchables? Like, I mean, you look at the the farm system, and, and you, know, you bring up some great names. Obviously, Justice Sheffield would be on that list, but there used to be the untouchable prospects. Are, are there any of those right now that you're looking at? I think uh... – Maybe the only untouchable in the system is as a uh, high A ball center fielder Esteban Floreal, who a scout told me last week um, could be a forty forty guy in the big leagues. What? Um, I've never had a scout tell me this, and this was a very well respected veteran scout uh, who told me that uh, this is one of the best prospects he's ever seen. He's a five tool center fielder. He's uh, in uh, in uh, Tampa right now. Uh, a pure center fielder with power, left-handed hitter. He's listed from Haiti. You, you read everywhere that he's going to be the first big leader from Haiti. Uh, he insists that he's not from Haiti. He says he's from Dominican. He says that everything is wrong about that. He's never even been to Haiti. But uh, uh, regardless, he's uh, and he's, uh, he's an incredibly intelligent guy, too. Uh, um, humble guy. I remember seeing him in his locker reading the Bible every day in spring training. His English, he speaks three languages. He's like, like Didi. Uh, but uh, this is the guy that I think is the one untouchable in the system that no one is getting. He's the center fielder of the future. Um, as far as Frazier, there's a lot I like about Frazier, too. I like his energy. I like his power, his enthusiasm. Um, but I, I just don't know that he has a future with the Yankees. Gardner has another year. He's a huge leader in that clubhouse. That intangible is huge when you have a, a young team. And uh, I just think that uh, I think that Frazier is going to be traded. That's my gut feeling. Back into the series tonight, Red Sox and Yankees. This is a rivalry, best teams in baseball. But which member of the Yankees team <laughs> right now needs to have a more impressive or not just struggle in the series? Manager Aaron Boone or slugger John Carlos Stanton? Uh, I I am very pro Aaron Boone. I, I just when they were nine and nine, I hear all these people calling for his firing, I thought it was ridiculous. And uh, one of the reasons he was hired is, is he's a very good communicator. Another reason he's hired, even though you'll never hear anyone from the Yankees say this, is I believe that Boone is getting instructions from management on who to play, who to pinch hit, who to bring in from analytics guys. And uh, I think that in baseball in general, there's a lot more management decisions that are, that are influencing or telling managers what to do during games. And a lot of these decisions that Boone is getting hammered for, I don't even think of their his decisions. And I, I think it was unfair to judge a manager on 18 games and look where they are at right now. Uh, I think he's done a very good job. Uh, it's too early to tell if he's going to be a, a great manager or not. But so far, even before the streak, uh, I think he, he did a he did a fine job. Uh, Stan, um, yeah, that's the guy you want to see step up. He's certainly off to a slow start. When you look at the back of his baseball cards, you see a lot of years where he's hit, uh, several years where he's hit 260 with, with 35, 40 homers. Um, if that's what he is this, this year, it's, it's only disappointing because of what he did last year. When you bring him in as a $30 million player coming off a 59 homer season, you team him up with Judge, people are thinking, all right, 50 minimum. And if he goes out and hits 35 homers, it's, it's disappointing. Um, I still think he's going to end up around 35, 40 homers. 
uh, in that ballpark. He hits the ball the other way when the weather. There's a lot of balls he's hit the ball didn't carry, and with the weather warm this weekend, we could certainly in the summer. I think we're going to see a lot of fly balls to right field that carry over the fence for home runs, and it just hasn't been hot yet. And he will get hot then. Maybe he comes out this weekend. Randy Miller, NJ.com. If you go there right now, he's got a full breakdown of the uh, Yankee Sox series. As a matter of fact, stats I've been dropping today uh, came directly from him. <laughs> 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 Good job as always, sir. Thank you so much for your time. I know it's a busy day for you. Do you, you, you need my address for the check or not? Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Are you in a tunnel? I Randy, can't hear we're breaking you. up. It's, What's it's... happening? <laughs> Goodbye, Randy. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> Randy, man, we appreciate you, brother. All right, thanks, guys.